I think that despair about all of these things is treated by action and taking positive action and doing what we can in our whatever our skill sets are and our motivation is really takes the feeling of despair away. The reason we are concerned is because of all those bomb tests and the, uh, not just Fukushima but the bomb test uh, that has left all the cesium in every uh, part of the ocean and likely future accidents. So we want to know how we can uh, deal with this. We know that we did get uh, measurable amounts of fallout from Fukushima because the UC Berkeley School of Nuclear Engineering was good enough to do some um, sampling and testing and they did report that and please do go to their site in their archives so we appreciate very much. That kind of testing is just so important. That came across the ocean in four to seven days and hit us and then went all the way around the planet. So here's a, a graphic and, and uh, from TEPCO, the operators of Fukushima, and looking at all of those on the left, those are tanks holding this wastewater that both uh, Ken and Tim have talked about that flows through the, the um, corium, the, the melted cores, and becomes intensely radioactive. Then they put it into these uh, hastily built um, tanks that are vulnerable to typhoons and earthquakes and corrosion and it's practically inevitable that it will eventually all end up into the Pacific. So through bioaccumulation, which is the uptake of organic compounds um, directly from water or food, and then biomagnification, the, the sequence of processes that moves it up the food chain, this is what we're, we're concerned with in the Pacific. As you know, the uh, phytoplankton absorb the mineral-like radioactive isotopes eaten by the krill, which are then fed upon by the small fish, and the small fish eaten by the larger fish, and they are concentrated and reconcentrated all the way up to the top of the food chain where whales and humans consume them. So there is at least one study that we know of that is being done to track this bioaccumulation in the Pacific Northwest. This is out of Simon Fraser University in uh, British Columbia, Lava Gaba study. And uh, we're really grateful that they're going to be doing this. The purpose that they uh, say, state is they want to be able to see when they can predict the point at which that the food web in the ocean will become toxic to the whales and to the humans who might be eating it. Uh, one company with integrity, Vital Choice, who sells wild seafood and canned, frozen, and, and makes fish supplements, is doing uh, testing on fish. And they began in uh, 2012, and after the fifth test, they did find one fish that was radioactive. It was a sockeye salmon. And it, it had, they didn't have any cesium in it. It was strontium-90, the equivalent to 65 becquerels. So um, this has already been uh, mentioned about it. It's important. Japan limit is 100 becquerels per kilogram and our limit is 1,200 becquerels per kilogram. This is for cesium in food. And so we, no doubt, will be importing food that's too radioactive to be sold in Japan. I just wanted to also bring out that there is a scientific consensus on radiation risk, that there is no safe dose of radioactivity. And embryos, young girls, children, and women are the most vulnerable, although, and, and male children are more susceptible than uh, adult males, but adult males, healthy young adult males, are what the standards are based on. This has already been mentioned, but the, it's really a critical difference, the external exposure uh, versus the internal, the in ingested or inhaled. Once it's lodged in your body, 
it's much more apt to do harm and stay there for a long time. Uh, a lot of times people, you'll hear uh, comparing uh, radioactivity that's man-made with background radiation and or radioactivity that's uh, man-made with naturally occurring radiation from thorium, you know, sands, and, and in a way that's meant to be dismissive, but they are all risks and they should be added together rather than one uh, eliminating the other. I wanted to bring up Dr. Yuri Bandajewski, who is the director of the Gomel Medical Student uh, Institute in Belarus, and he discovered that the people in, in uh, Belarus that he studied were actually affected very much by the uh, radioactivity that they had absorbed and then passed down, the mutations passed down, just like the animal studies that are being done now by Tim. And they, they were then, the children were then much more vulnerable to small doses of cesium from their uh, intake in the food and the water and the milk and so on. And this is, these are very, they're very low levels where heart disease began 10 to 30 becquerels per kilogram and then uh, 50 becquerels per kilogram, per kilogram, the permanent tissue organ damage. So in these areas that were most affected, um, they have death rates that are several times higher than the birth rate. I, I also wanted to bring out the, I didn't know that Tim was going to mention uh, this study. It wasn't it you? Yeah, the disasters in Dragon Kings. This is, I won't take much time with that because Tim already spoke about this, but we know we're going to have another accident. There are 400 operating reactors, 99 here in the US. But instead of taking steps to increase safety and lower risk, the governments are instead increasing the uh, allowable levels of radioactivity because they want to continue the, with the, the industry. For instance, it, the allowable exposure levels in uh, Japan have been raised to what was formerly for uh, only for nuclear workers. They're pushing people to return to the contaminated areas and uh, they want to restart the reactors not the Japanese people, just the government wants to start the reactors in, if you probably noticed, active volcano areas. There's one that's just been started only 30 miles from an active volcano and earthquake and typhoon vulnerable areas. And of course, in the US, we are, the, the NRC, extending the licenses, uh, licenses for these aging reactors that weren't supposed to operate beyond 40 years to, um, they want to op let them operate another 40. Radioactivity breaks down metal and cement, bolts uh, in the reactors and in the, the facilities, it's, it's, they're crumbling and they want to push them uh, to another 40 years. And then the EPA protective action guidelines are being diminished. And then um, in Japan, mothers who are uh, frantic about their uh, concern for their children are being told um, it's, it's, you have more to fear from fear itself. And um, you know, just smile and it'll, it, it'll be okay. And also here in the US, there is an attempt to push the concept of hormesis, which means that a little radioactivity is good for you and to make uh, possibly uh, change the standards. Uh, Tim has reassured me that will never happen, but I'm still nervous about it. <laughs> um, so we're advocating pursuing the precautionary principle. And uh, here, here are some actions that we think that should be taken. We also, we want to really underscore, help fund the independent scientific research. Uh, tell all your friends, all your billionaire friends. And join the citizen scientist radiation monitoring efforts. 
and support the Japanese people in, in their extreme situation. It's just horrible what they're uh, having to go through, all these refugees being pushed back into contaminated lands and, and their um, uh, support being cut off after 2017. So, and also join the movement with us to shut down our own potential Fukushima Diablo Canyon.